Mr. Putter and Tabby Fly the Plane by Cynthia Ryland. Mr. Putter loved toys. He was old, and he knew that he wasn't supposed to love toys anymore, but he did. When Mr. Putter and his fine cat Tabby drove into town, they always stopped at the toy store. Tabby was not happy at the toy store. She was old, too, and her nerves weren't as good as they used to be. The wind-ups made her twitch. The pop-ups made her jump, and anything that flew gave her the hiccups. But Tabby loved Mr. Putter, so she put up with all of it. While she twitched and jumped and hiccuped, Mr. Putter played with everything. He played with the dump trucks. He played with the cranes. He played with the bear on the flying trapeze. But most of all, he played with the planes. Ever since he was a boy, Mr. Putter had loved planes. When he was young, he had covered his whole room with them. Biplanes were his favorite, but he also loved monoplanes and seaplanes and shiny ace junkers. He thought he might really fly a plane one day, but he never did. So now he just looked at the toy planes every chance he got. One day, when Mr. Putter and Tabby were in the toy store, and Tabby was hissing at a wind-up penguin, Mr. Putter spotted a plane he had never seen before. It was white and red, with two wings on each side, and a little flag on its tail. It was the most beautiful biplane he had ever seen, and it had a radio control so a person might really fly it. Mr. Putter was in love. He bought the little plane and put it in the car with Tabby. He told her not to worry. He promised her a nice cup of tea with lots of cream and a warm English muffin. But still, she hiccuped all the way home. Chapter 2, The Little Plane Mr. Putter kept his promise. He gave Tabby tea with cream and a warm English muffin. Then together they went outside to fly his new plane. Tabby had stopped hiccuping, but only because she was full of tea. She still didn't like Mr. Putter's plane. Mr. Putter sat on the grass and read all the directions. Then he put the plane on the grass and stepped back and pressed the start button. But the little plane did not start. It just rolled over and died. Tabby purred. Mr. Putter ran to the little plane. He set it right again. He told it to be a good little plane. He stepped back and pressed the start button. But the plane did not start. It fell on its nose and died. Tabby purred and purred. Mr. Putter ran to the plane. He brushed the dirt off its nose. He told it to be a brave little plane. He stepped back and pressed the start button. But the plane did not start. One of its wings fell off, and it died. Tabby purred and purred and purred. But poor Mr. Putter was so sad. He picked up his little biplane. He told the plane that it was all his fault. 
He told it that he was an old man, and old men shouldn't have toys anyway. He said he wasn't any good at flying planes. Tabby watched Mr. Putter. She could see that he was sad. Then she felt sad, too. Tabby went to Mr. Putter and rubbed herself against his legs. She sat on his shoulder, put her head by his, and licked his nose. This made Mr. Putter feel better. He decided to try again. He fixed the wing. He set the little plane on the grass. He told it that he and Tabby knew it was the best plane in the world. Then he pressed the start button. The little plane choked. The little plane coughed. The little plane gagged. But it didn't die. It warmed up and began to sound better. Then, slowly, slowly, it rolled across the grass. It picked up speed, and then it flew. It flew high into the blue sky. Mr. Putter cheered. Tabby purred and hiccuped. Mr. Putter was finally flying a plane of his own.